Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on uh, Facebook Live and uh, welcome to Christ the King in Wilmington, Ohio. Uh, we're going to uh, pray and then begin our, uh, our Bible study this morning. So uh, let's pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to, to gather like this. And we just pray that you would uh, pour out your spirit on this place, Lord, that you will work in the hearts and, and lives of those that are here and, and, and in those who are watching. Well, we're here because we love you. We're here because we honor you. We worship you. We praise you. And we are uh, extremely grateful for all you've done for us. Help us to be everything that we should be for you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I was uh, thinking this week uh, um, at that I am uh, I am interested in becoming a more radical Christian. What do you What do you think of when you think of radical? I want to blow something up. Extreme. Yeah, radical. Um, and I'm going to tell you or explain to you what I mean by radical. Uh, and and how I, I really believe that we ought to become radical in our Christianity uh, not in a not in a weird way but radical in our Christianity means that we're so in tune with Jesus that we will follow him and we will obey him and we will serve him the way he wants us to not in a man-made way okay and I'll, I'll explain that as we go I, uh, I did a little googling this week and uh, found out, and some of you know these statistics probably already, that supposedly 70% of America is Christian. 70% is Christian. So I thought to myself, that's a big percentage of Christian. So I looked at the, uh, I looked at the, uh, the polling and how they got to that. I don't know whether, you know, I don't, I don't understand polling, uh, but it apparently is, is uh, they have a scientific way of doing it. And there were a couple of criteria that made a person a Christian. Church attendance, church attendance, and and how many times you prayed a week. Well, how does that tell anything about a, being a Christian? And I and I thought about this. I thought about the fact that where in the in the Bible do you see church attendance as a sign of being a Christian? In fact, where do you even see much about church attendance in the scripture? Paul will mention in some of his books as he's closing it, greet so-and-so and the church that meets in their house, right? It's a gathering of people. Uh, and, and, and we, I think what we do, I know what we do, and we can be just as guilty of it ourselves, is to having these man-made uh, metrics of what is a Christian. Man-made metrics. Do you go to church? Uh, we, I always, I'm always fascinated, and I don't mean to offend anybody, uh, but I'm always fascinated this time of the year when uh, Lent comes. And I don't, we don't do Lent. I'm not against Lent. But the day before Lent starts, what do they have in, in, uh, in New Orleans? They have Fat Tuesday, where you just live in total debauchery for one day, and then the next day you then uh, sacrifice something. Where is that in here? Uh, where is church attendance? How often do you pray a week? Well, what, what kind of prayer is it? Is prayer important? Lord, I need more money. That's a prayer, right? Lord, I want you to fix me this. I need a new wife. I need a new girlfriend. I need a new husband or whatever. Uh, church attendance and prayer and these outside metrics are not genuine Christianity. So how, what is the percentage of Christians in America? I don't know. But if it was genuine that high, we would have a different culture, I believe. We would have a totally different culture. So what does it mean, then, to be a radical Christian? Well, uh, we have just, uh, we're in Ephesians chapter 4, and I actually have three messages already prepared for the next three weeks. And I'm going to give you the titles of them, and, and we're gonna, I'm going to work through Ephesians chapter 4. Uh, and uh, uh, I may move from message 1 to message 2 to message 3 every week. But uh, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 4, and we have just completed a section in the book of Ephesians where Paul has so dynamically explained to us what God has done for us before the foundation of the world, when he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, and he raised us up together with him 
And I think it's summed up really very nicely in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. For by grace you've been saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. And so we have this amazing thing that God has done through, uh, for us through his, through his sovereign grace. Paul never explains all of the intricacies on how it works. He just says, you've been chosen in him before the foundation of the world. And you've been we've been raised together with him and put on the, set in the right hand of the throne of God with Christ. God did all of that. How much of that did we do? We didn't do anything. We didn't do anything. The only thing we quote unquote do is what? We believe. We believe that Jesus is the only way of salvation. And, and so he has just finished that. And we, we, were, we finished chapter 3 last week. And we're now looking at uh, chapter 4, verse 1. And, he, and Paul writes, that I therefore, as a, pris a prisoner of the Lord, I therefore, as a, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So he then he calls on us to walk in a manner worthy. Walk, walk. Uh, if you uh, look at, if you have a, a, a paper Bible like I have, uh, and uh, here you'll notice that he uses that word walk in chapter four, verse one. He uses it in chapter uh, uh, four, verse seventeen. In chapter five, verse two. In chapter five, verse. 9 in chapter 5 verse uh, 15 he uses that word walk walk in a manner worthy what does walk mean what does walk mean what does he mean by walk getting one from one place to another okay at a steady pace yeah it's following a path isn't it? it's falling it's following a path and and walking is is uh is, is what he's saying is, I want you to walk in this, this path. We'll look at the path in a moment. But think about what walking is. What happens when you walk? I'm getting warm in here. All right? Usually a trip. That's what happens. I went to the West End Pharmacy a couple of weeks ago. Anybody go to West End Pharmacy? You know what I mean? It's out on the West End. So you, if you go into the West End Pharmacy, there is a double door, and on each side are two big glass panels. And then you have a, you have a little a mini place between the doors, and then you go into this lobby area, and there are various, there's a couple of doctor's offices, and over to the right is the uh, pharmacy. So I was going in there to get a prescription, and so, and I've been in there like, a million times. Well, that may be exaggeration. I've been in there a lot. So I come out of the pharmacy, and there's a lady that I I recognize between the two glass standing there, and I I can't I don't know her name, but I've I've known her or know who she is. I'm familiar with her, and she's standing in there, and I walk out of the pharmacy, and I'm looking around, and I turn right immediately and ran right smack dab into that glass window. <laughs> and smack my head on the window. Well, now she's laughing. She's laughing. And I went through the door and I said, well, you'll have something to talk about now for quite some time. So what's my point? When we walk in a manner worthy, uh, we do just like Diana said, we trip, right? We run into glass, we mess up, but what do we, what do, we do? We get up and we keep on. And so what he's talking about here, I believe, is not... That we're perfect in our walk, but that we keep walking. Beth and I was reminding me as I was talking to her about this this week. Uh, we were both given Apple watches. Apple watches are are uh, are kind of cool. Anybody have an Apple watch? Yeah, or I think maybe Fitbit's the same way. If you sit around too much, what does it tell you? To stand up. Stand up. <clears throat> so stand up. Mine tells me to breathe. Yeah. 
like I don't know to breathe. And, and, so, and, and so what Paul is saying here is that we are to walk in a manner worthy, worthy of what? Of the call to which you, uh, uh, of the calling to which you have been called. Now I want to point out these two words in verse one, calling and called. And down in verse four, there's another, there's called and call. See those two? Those two words are, two, are translated from two different words. They're not the same word. And so what he is saying here is that, notice what he's saying. He's saying, in the manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. What is the calling? What is our calling? Our mission? What has he just talked about in the last three chapters? He's talked about how that we were chosen in him before the foundation of the world, that we were called, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. And he's saying, I'm he said, I want you to walk worthy of the calling. That is the mission. That is what we are to be doing. Uh, the mission, the calling to which you have been called. In other words, God said, hey, hey, I'm calling you to this. I'm calling you to this. And he says the same thing down in verse, uh, in verse uh, 5. There's one body, one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. That second call is the same word as calling. So what's the point? What's the point? The, 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 we are to walk in a manner worthy, worthy of the calling to which you've been called. In other words, he's called us to do something. Here, here's the point I guess I'm trying to make. I feel like I'm fumbling a little bit. Here's the point. This following Jesus business is, this is serious stuff in the mind of God. This is serious stuff. Uh, Christianity is more than going to church. We, we so muddle it. We so muddle what, what it is to, to follow Jesus. Uh, we, we, uh, I don't even like the term, we're going to church. I don't know what else you do uh, to use. Because this hour, uh, this hour that we spend together, and then we'll go to B-dubs. Our B-dubs this afternoon, it was, as we sit in, at B-dubs, is as much church as this is. Right? Because we're going to go there, and our prayer is to have, a, uh, to, to have an impact, maybe an opportunity over just being there, of being able to share our faith with somebody along the way. And so it's not that. It's, 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 it's more than that. It's the youth group on Thursday night. It's the home Bible studies uh, that go on. It's the meeting at Jen's Deli on Friday. It's going to work tomorrow. Uh, it's <coughs> all a part of our church. And we've talked a lot about that and, and the mission that God has given us to love God, to love people, and to live our lives. That our lives are the vehicle for which we, we, we walk worthy of the manner in which we've been called. And so I want to be that kind of person. And I want CTK Wilmington to, to have that kind of a mentality. But then notice what he talks about here. Verse 2. Uh, let, me, let me start over. There, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. This is radical. Then notice how he describes it. With all what? Humility. Humility. Oh, I hate that. With all humility. What is humility? If you think you have it, you don't. <laughs> if you think you have it, you don't. You haven't read my book, Humility and How I Attained It? <laughs> what Humility, what is it? Is it I'm no good, you're no good, we're worthless, we're no good, we can't do anything? No. It's putting others first, isn't it? It's putting others at least at the same level we put ourselves. Humility and gentleness with what? Patience. Patience. <laughs> then what's the next phrase? The worst part of all. <laughs> 
bearing one another in love, <coughs> eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. And why? There's one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over who is over all and through all and in all. Why do we, as, uh, as followers of Jesus, not get along with each other? We're judgmental. Some We're judgmental. aren't as humble as we are. Some are not as humble as we are. Yeah. Why don't we get along? Different what else? Per different personalities. Different personalities. Different likes. Different different uh, different personality different likes different dislikes different pass different past different pass different upbringing different beliefs 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 different philosophies and and through all this Paul is telling us is telling us that we need to we need to walk in this uh, it walk uh, in a manner worthy of the calling. How are we going to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which we've been called? It's when we humble ourselves. It's when we it's when we uh, are gentle with each other. It's when we're patient with each other. It's when we bear one another in love. Here's the bottom line. I'm going to irritate you, and you're going to irritate me. It's just the way it is. I love the lovely Mrs. Clementson. I'm glad you don't see some of the discussions we have. We like to put on a facade here like everything's good. It's not always good. We have our disagreements. And you do too, don't you? Yeah. So what keeps those disagreements from exploding and blowing up? Sometimes they do, right, unfortunately. What keeps us from doing that? Compromise. Compromise. But we love each other. We love each other. And we respect each other. And we respect that, uh, we respect each other's different way. She, Beth looks at things different than I do. I appreciate the way she looks at things. And I don't think she appreciates the way I look at things. Glaring, glaring, <laughs> glaring at me at the moment. So in But so what happens within 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 churches and 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 we see this down through the ages where believers don't get along with each other often, and there's not this unity. But when we are humble, and you can be extremely gifted in your life, and live a life of humility. Jesus was really gifted, and yet he was humble. And so he says. He says, uh, again, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. You get the point? Unity. Unity. You know what? Uh, I I really I really love the the ability to text people. You like that? Were you texting yes. somebody? Yes. <laughs> I thought you were pointing me out too. <laughs> See, bearing bearing one another in patience and love. I'm going to overlook the fact that you were not hanging on every word. I love texting. The bad thing about texting is that's not communicating. You send a text and you start explaining yourself to somebody and what happens on the other, same way with emails, what happens on the other, what do they mean by that? Exactly. What do they mean by that? I'm not, I'm not going to be able to come today. What does that mean? So we need as Christians to be careful in how we react to texts. <laughs> we need to be careful how we react to uh, uh, to emails. 
Uh, here's what happens with me, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a story, and I know you're the same way. We perceive that somebody does something a certain way. We don't know that. We get this perception, and then it begins to fester in us, right? We say, well, they must not like me because they didn't do this. Well, if they don't like me, well, I'm not going to like them either, right? Any of you do that? Yeah. It's just human nature, I think. And so what Paul is saying here is, is look, we are, in this, we are in this business of walking in a manner worth. Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit in eternity past chose us in him before the foundation of the world. For what reason? Why did he chose, choose us? Don't get hung up on the mechanics of all of that. Why did he choose us? That, that's more than a pregnant pause right there. <laughs> that is serious delivery issues right there. Why did he choose huh? Because we're his creation. Well, he chose us because we're his creation. But he chose us for what? He chose us to, 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 to fellowship. He chose us to serve him. He chose us to, to follow him. He chose us to be uh, devoted to him. He chose us to be uh, his workmanship. He, his workmanship for that we would produce good works. From Genesis 3 to Revelation 22, there's been one central message of the Bible, and that's the gospel. That God sent a provision for mankind's sin. And how does he get that message out? He gets it out through us. He gets it out through us. And so, uh, and so we, we have this 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 admonition from Paul to walk in a manner worthy. I want to walk in a manner worthy of his calling. And as we mentioned, and Diana mentioned, and I told the story of running into the window, when you walk, you're going to fall down. We're not talking about perfection. We're not talking about, we're not talking about doing it right all the time. But when we fall down or we run into the window, you move down to the door and then go out. You don't just quit give up. I ran into the window. It's embarrassing. And I was afraid I was going to have a knot on my head. Fortunately, I did not. But you trip, you fall, you get up, you walk, right? Walk in a manner worthy. Well, what is, what is radical Christianity? It's following Jesus and being serious about it. It's not about a bunch of man-made rules that we follow. It's not about, it's not about, um, it, it's only about following his word, seeking his face, and being what he wants us to be. i got to tell this story. It has nothing to do with this message, but I've been dying to tell you this story. <laughs> well, it sort of does. I, uh, I uh, like uh, Francis Chan. You, you listen to Francis Chan. And uh, he is a kind of a unique guy, uh, had a big church in Southern California, uh, left that church to go to the work the streets of San Francisco, reach, preaching the gospel to street people, left a big church to do that. But he was, I, I was, as I was doing this search for things, came across a thing when he said, he's talked about um, rethinking outreach. And what is outreach? Sharing the gospel, going out, reaching people for Jesus. And he said, he said, uh, he said, imagine if God, he, and he's talked about how, and we'll talk about this later because it comes up later, but he, the, the Bible describes the non-believer as being dead in their, and talks about us. We were dead in our trespasses and sins. Talks about us being dead, right? Talks about us being uh, blind. The spiritual, their eyes have been blinded. So to have been blind, uh, they're described as spiritually dead. Obviously not physically dead. They've been blinded. He said, what if God came to this, and I'll, I'm going to apply it to us. What if God came to our little group here that said, and I want you to go out to the cemetery on Truesdale, and I want you to raise me one from the dead. 
just get me one. What would we do? Now, understand the story. Go out to Truesdale, to the cemetery, raise one person from the dead. What will we do? This is legit now, God telling us that. Now he's not going to, but he's imagine this. What are we going to do? Going to put together a great PowerPoint presentation? <laughs> are we going to go around the room and see who is the best speaker, most articulate? Go out to the graveyard? We're going to find somebody who's uh, really, uh, uh, we'll get, we'll go hire some really high level musicians and set up out at the uh, graveyard and sing, what would we do? We pray. Because there ain't nobody raising anybody from that dead except God. And that's really the, 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 the thing that we've been called to do. We've been called, we are not called to save people. We are called to do what? Share the message. Share the message. And we get hung up, I think, on a lot of things that don't matter. And we lose sight of the fact that God has called us to share the message of salvation, of the gospel, that Jesus is the only way. <clears throat> and Jesus is the only way. And it's a travesty when people say, well, you know, there's a lot of different ways to get to heaven. There's not. Jesus Christ is the only way. Well, you know, Paul, you're a bigot. You're exclusive. You, no, that's the truth. To tell anyone else differently is a violation of what God has told us to do. And so he says, and I want to read it again, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to close. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner, again, walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing one another in love eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Being a radical Christian is, is walking in this manner. We're going to go on, and the next week's message is going to be we are gifted to serve, and in the last section... We're going to talk about changing your spiritual clothes. Spiritual clothes. And I will say this to, to us. There's a lot of people, and, and maybe we're all guilty of this, who claim they follow Jesus and live contrary to his word. They live in sin. We laugh at sin. We think it's not important. And we don't realize that we are called to holiness and purity. Again, when we walk in that manner, what do we do? We run into the door. It's not perfection. We trip and fall. We trip and fall and we skin our knees. What do we do when we do that? Get some bandage out and some salve. Put it on our knees. We keep on striving to serve him and presenting a clear message of, 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 the, of what God wants us to do. That's why I, de I decided a long time ago the importance of, of preaching through this book and dealing whatever issues come. Because Paul warned Timothy in the latter days there will be those that will come. They will gather around them teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. And I don't want to be that. I want to speak the truth in love, compassion, kindness, all of those things. But I want to be radically committed to Jesus. I want to follow him with all my heart, serve him with all my heart, soul, and mind. And you know what? I want you to do that too. I want you to do that too. There's a selfish side to this. Can I tell you what the selfish side is? There's no better life than following Christ. You know, Paul wrote the Philippians. Remember this verse? He said this, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection familiar with that verse that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and what's the third thing and share in his sufferings oh I don't want to do that 
that I may know him, the power of his, res his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, with his suffering. You know, I've suffered in life, but a lot of it's been because I was an idiot, right? Made mistakes, did stupid things. But I really do believe if we suffer for Christ, there's something special about that. And he gives the grace to deal with it. I want to be like Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. Do I do it? Eh, sometimes. Sometimes not. But I want to be radical in my faith. And I want us to be radical in our faith, in our service for Jesus Christ. And that is signified by being humble, bearing with one another, loving people. I want to really love people. I want to really love people no matter what they're doing. I really want to love people. Not condone what they're doing, but love people as Jesus loved them. That's what I think we ought to be. I'm going to close in prayer and we'll have our worship team come up and lead us in our singing. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to share this today. Help us, Lord, to walk in a manner. Remind us, just like our Apple Watch reminds us to get up and walk. Lord, the Holy Spirit, remind us, I pray, I beg of you, uh, when we slip aside, we get off the path, we wander away, draw us back so we can be more like Jesus. And for those, Lord, that maybe are listening or they're here or on Facebook Live or will watch on YouTube later, I just pray, Lord, that if there are those that do not know Christ as Savior, never asked you to save them from their sins, that they might be motivated to, through a simple prayer, to ask you to save them from their sins and to begin to trust and follow you. Help us to walk in a manner worthy, in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've called us. And I pray that you would give us that desire, that you would give us, that you would motivate us in that direction. And as I, as I prayed earlier, Lord, when we slip off the track, that you would gently draw us back. We want to have an impact for you in Wilmington, in Clinton County, and in, 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 in whatever that means, whatever that looks like, that's what we want to do, have an impact for you. Whether it's on a major scale or just a minor scale, you're the one that produces fruit. You're the one that raises the spiritual dead. And so we pray that you would use us for your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may now text because there'll be singing going on. No. No, that's not right. I didn't mean that. I was just teasing. You didn't give her her phone back, did you? I just, I just said it. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Caleb and Cheryl. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, well, we'll stand and sing at this time. We'll start by singing. We'll sing three songs uh, in closing. First one being, Great Are You, Lord. Uh, I think you all have sung this before, and uh, hopefully we'll recall it as we sing together.
Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, living breath of God, breathe new life into my willing soul. Let the presence of the risen Lord come renew my heart and make me whole. was uh, a request from Beth, so we're expecting Beth to sing extra loud, right? <laughs> all right. Is this is not the one? No, I just thought, oh. Uh, yeah, this is the one. So you're, you're going to have to sing super loud and keep us all on point, but we're, we'll, we'll be all right, right? Okay. Once a month, we'll learn a new song. How's that, right? Living Hope.
say goodbye in a moment to uh, Facebook Live, but next week we will continue in this uh, radical Christianity theme because we're going to talk about the fact that we have been equipped to serve. Paul said they gave the church apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And so uh, it's not just we're going to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which we've been called, but we are equipped to follow that and to and to serve him. So we'll talk about that next week and then the following week it's going to be chine, it's going to be time to change our clothes. Change our spiritual clothes. Get rid of the dirty ones and put on some clean ones. So that's the third message in this little series. So we're going to say goodbye. Uh, let me pray before we do and then uh, we'll say goodbye to Facebook Live. Father, thank you for the opportunity to uh, to gather like this. We pray Lord that uh, what was taught here today will uh, be used by your Holy Spirit to change lives, recognizing there's nothing in and of our, uh, ourselves that we can do. We can't change anybody's mind or anything like that. We can just share the message. And uh, Lord, it's up to you, and we ask you to, to use the, the words, whether faltering or not, for your glory. We pray that you'll bless the uh, rest of our little time together. Bless those on Facebook Live as we say goodbye to them. Bless our time in a little bit at uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. Again, we go there, Lord, because we'd like to have an impact uh, in a small way and in, 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 in just being there in that venue uh, and hopefully have an opportunity to, to be a, an outreach, a light in a world that so desperately needs you. Thank you for this time we've spent together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we'll say goodbye.